Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with. It's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org. Consequence and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks as always for making your way here and checking out the series. You know what to do. You like what you see, what you hear, hit that subscribe button. I put out three new interviews every single week. So it's a great way to keep up with all of your favorite artists. Excited today to be talking with Mark and Delicato about the new season of Hacks. Hello, Mark. What's up, Kyle? It's great to see you, man. Uh, and especially on such a great show. Everybody fell in love with it with the uh, the first season yeah. right out of the gates. And now the whole crew's on the road, right? Uh, we're going back on the road. Well, we're going on the road for the first time, at least in Damien's experience with Deborah. So right. should be rich. <laughs> <laughs> so so what 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 is the setup for this one? You know, the, what I wrote down was this feels like a season of a humble quest. Uh, mm -hmm. for just about everybody. I mean, I mean, how would you explain really? what's going on over the course of this one? Well, I uh, when you when you leave us last season, uh, you see that that Ava sends a very, very revealing and scathing uh, kind of expose about Deborah. Um, and Deborah kind of like bombs at her at her show that, you know, they had been working the whole season to kind of prepare. But so I, I think that you're you're correct in saying that it's this humble quest, this this uh, this really kind of humbling experience where both Ava and Deborah have been humbled in different ways, but they're obviously intertwined in the sense of um, Deborah ends up suing Ava. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then on top of that, you know, we're we're on we're on the road. I think that it's also new for everyone involved, every single character. It's new for Damien, it's new for Deborah. Deborah hasn't done this in however many years, decades. I mean, uh, Ava, it's her first time going on tour with Deborah. It's new for, for Marcus. Uh, you know, we bring uh, someone like the character of Weed, Lori Metcalf into the fold. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I think that it's, 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 a humble, it's a humble quest, but it's also a jarring experience for everyone involved. Yeah, uh, in different ways, I'm sure. Becomes a nice road trip uh, sort of show, uh, you know, as, as sort of an aside to it all. Like, I like a good road trip movie, so this kind of plays into that as well. Yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, and also, you know, I, I, I think that uh, there's also kind of comedy in calling it a humble quest when you see Deborah's lodgings on this tour bus. I mean, it's fucking ridiculous. Right. <laughs> Everybody but Ava, of course, gets, gets the nice exactly. spot. I mean, well, even, naturally. Right, naturally. Even you've got the, uh, the nicer spot, uh, at least in comparison right there. So, so yeah. for Damien and, and, and how you're going about this, you know, obviously we're getting to see your character so much more this time around, which is great. Yeah. How you're interacting uh with, with deborah uh how you're interacting with david too but uh, but you know from damien's point of view i mean having to cater to someone like 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 gene's character with, with deborah here you know she isn't grounded in the same reality i think a lot of us are grounded in like like when you're when you're in that character like what's i guess what i'm asking is what's going through damien's mind as far as just having to keep up like is this normal is this normal for for damien's world as well well, I think that, you know, I, I, you can look at it from two different perspectives, right? I mean, I think from one perspective, I'm sure that he could probably be looking at this and be like, this woman is ridiculous. Um, but I don't think that that's the way that he looks at it. I think that, you know, one of the things that I've realized, especially this season with Damien, um, even uttering just one line of like, I don't like comedy. Because one of the things that I was that I was trying to kind of grapple with or or locate last season, but it wasn't really pertinent uh, to the like where Damien fit into last season. It was like, what is it about Deborah that he likes? Is he a fan? Is he does he respect her as a businesswoman? Is it both? Is it just a is it just a job? And I think that what I like landed on this season, and I think that you know, obviously with much help from the writers and, and from Paul Lucci and Jen is that like Damien, Damien's work ethic uh, is, is, you know, his work ethic game is strong. Uh, he cares a lot about his job and doing his job well. And I think that not only is, is that, I think that he respects that and admires that in Deborah. Deborah's a hustler. I think that Damien's kind of mania and uh dryness and and uh you know just kind of commitment to his job stems directly from his inspiration from deborah 
mm -hmm. of like the ways in which she's kind of built this empire. So I think that, you know, it was great for me this season to read those lines of like, yeah, I don't like comedy because then it was just like, oh, well then he just respects Deborah as a businesswoman. Um, and, uh, and so I think that that's kind of where I stood in like kind of making Damien this season. Uh, and it, it's amazing how much character development can be put in one line like that. Yes. You know, yeah. just that, as you're, as you're saying, I don't like comedy. Like you get so much in, in so little. This whole world opened up to me, really. I mean, I, I, I really didn't, um, because I also, you know, uh, I could have gone to Paul and Lucia and Jen and asked about it, but I didn't really know at the time, like how to articulate what I was trying to ask, you know what I mean? Like, you know, when you have the question in your head, but you like cannot are like, it, you can't put it into words really. Um, so, you know, I think that, yeah, just that one line really changed the entire, my entire view of like what Damien is doing there when I read it. Um, yeah. And it lends itself then in, in, you know, subsequent episodes where I felt like, you know, Damien's having a little bit more fun in subsequent episodes. And I think that that, stems directly just from, again, from that one line, I don't like comedy when he tells Ava that. And that Ava kind of agrees with his rationale for it, which I also think is hilarious because right. that also lends itself to not only like the character of, of Damien, but it also lends itself to kind of Damien and Ava leveling with each other for the first time. Because up until this point, you're just, up until that scene, you're only really getting that Damien has disdain for this girl. What the fuck is she doing here? whatever whatever deborah doesn't need her or just or or that damien just doesn't like her no one really knows um but you know i think that just that scene uh of damien and ava talking they really do level with each other where he's like yeah i don't like comedy and she's like you're right like, the reason why is kind of right so i think that that was um you know really pivotal scene for me just reading this season before we start shooting it yeah. And those moments come along. I mean, uh, uh, later up, you know, we find out uh, Damien's the type of person who uh, who knows Stevie Wonder, but doesn't know some of the most obvious things about Stevie Wonder. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, I think, you know, uh, ask me to explain how and why. I don't really think I could give you. a Well, that's comedy, answer. right? That's it's, yeah. it's just I mean, I just think that it's hilarious. Um but I mean, if you really wanted to analyze it, I mean, I guess it could be that he's just, you know, he's he's laser focused in on what his world is, I think, very small. Mm. You know what I mean? I don't think that he's, um, you know, I don't think that he's uh, as cultured. At, at, you know, I don't think that he's very cultured. <laughs> I don't think that Damien listens to music. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like, I don't think that I don't think that Damien, like, let alone know about like, like music history. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think that Damien has it. Like, if you were like, what's your favorite artist? Like, I don't think that Damien has one. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's again, says so much about that. Like, cause you, like, you, you might know that Stevie Wonder exists. You might know that Stevie Wonder, you know, plays a piano. Well, yeah, but he's always but... just wearing, he's always just wearing sunglasses. That's right. his aesthetic, it's his thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you mentioned, I think before in some other interviews that uh, also it's just, Damien's also in this state of panic. Just like yeah. a constant state of panic, yeah, and, and always running. Like, and, and for you, yeah. uh, I'll ask candidly: like, how many miles have you picked up? And like, what's what's the step? You know, listen, uh, step I am, here? I am so, I am so out of shape. So, um, you know, doing when we were shooting the the bit um, with the running, you know, I. Uh, Luckily, you know, Damien is, is in very comfortable clothing, you know, like those penny loafers are real comfortable, you know, they got that nice, you know, foam sole or whatever. So that wasn't difficult. I think that what was more difficult with the physical comedy aspect of Damien this season with the mania is when he's breaking down the, the seamless in the mm -hmm. background of Ava and Deborah talking. And it just said in the script, like Damien breaks down a seamless and Lucia was just kind of like, we want like we're 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 gonna see you like we're gonna position gene and hannah like in between and we're gonna see you so keep struggling with it and um and so i really went for it and in one of the one of the takes i fell and um after uh we cut lucia i remember came up to me and was like really sucks because that's super funny and you're gonna have to fall in every single 
take now. So, and you know, it ended up making it into the show. So like, I, it's all fine. But I think that that was something that was also really fun. Cause I, you know, with Damien, one of the things that I also have like not struggled with, but have been contemplating is like, how do you be in a scene without saying anything? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times, like what Damien is doing is, is, you know, in the, the background of a scene, but it's totally visible. So how do you pay respect to the scene at hand and not take away from it, but really add to it? And I think that, you know, that kind of breaking down of the seamless scene was something where I kind of was like, oh, this is how you like do it. You know what I mean? Where it wasn't like he was throwing it up in the air and, do you know, whatever. But it was it was just big enough. And again, that is that sounds directly from uh, guidance from Paul Lucci and Jen. I mean, it's just like incredible. Yeah. The background comedy stuff like you, I don't like nothing comes to mind. Like you don't see that very often anymore. It reminds me a lot of like uh, the like 80s style movies would yeah. have a lot of that background comedy going on there you yeah. know where the that's um it's it's got to be fun to play with i would imagine too that's it was su it's super fun to play with and it's super fun to play with especially when you know that you know the the people in charge the powers that be want you to play with it you know i think that in the first season there were a lot more opportunities for me to do exactly that but i was so nervous about shooting the season like the first season just because I was in awe of this kind of cast that I was getting to work with with you know the writers and and the people you know that are involved in the show and making the show and so I I don't think that I really kind of took those risks or like acted you know in the way that maybe I could have I, I you know there were like lost opportunities for me and so like this season I really wanted to kind of just for myself even you know um lean into that and and uh you know be as present as possible um yeah. as damien i love it those moments they do they, they make so much of an impact and it, it's got to be pointed out of course the balance that you all are are pulling off here mm. because it, you do get comedy but you're doing a lot of important work at the same time i mean i i think about of course, you can look at uh, Deborah and Ava's relationship, and this is one of the most complicated relationships I think that's that's been put on on screen. Mm -hmm. But I think everybody's having their version of a complicated relationship with each other uh, as you go out. I mean, and and again, as you said, props to the writers of the show for just doing such an amazing balancing act. I, how are the conversations before you get into this uh, as you're talking? Because because it feels like uh, tightrope's not the right word. But if, you know, to, to be able to hit that with everybody in such a specific way, I mean, how much prep goes into this? I mean, I think that there's a lot of, um, you know, I think that there's a lot of individual prep that we all do. I think I can speak for everyone in terms of just like, uh, you know, doing their homework before we go to work. Um, but again, I, I really do feel, I, I, I'm sure I sound like a broken record, but I feel like the the scripts in the story is so are so incredible and the words are so good that you know it really jumps off the page at least for me you know where it's like you're reading these 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 scripts and and um and seeing these these kind of complicated relationships either flourish or deteriorate or you know having really difficult kind of sociocultural conversations and um and it's all really on the page for you and also on top of that, of it just being good writing, there's a sense of intention there. Like it's not, we're not, I don't think that they're trying to have these conversations or write these conversations into the show um, as a means of checking off any particular box of like, we're gonna talk about queerness today. We're gonna talk about ageism today. Like, I think that Paul, Lucia, Jen, the writers, everyone is, are, are truly invested in like, exa like truly analyzing and, and examining these, these these stories, these tropes, these stereotypes, um, and doing it in in a in a creative way. And also, I think that you know, having very difficult conversations in the context of comedy is also, I believe, makes uh, having difficult conversations or debates um, more palatable. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can have them in the context of comedy, I just think that it's harder to have them in the context of comedy because it's hard to make these things funny, which the they managed to do. Yeah. Um, and so I think that that's really the, like where I at least see the crux of like 
um, you know, the kind of, I don't know, the subtext of the show. I mean, we're, we're talking about really big things. Yeah. yeah, I think you pointed out before, and it it was sort of one of those little mind explosion moments when it finally, when I realized what I was looking for, because um, I think you had said like almost every single character uh, is is queer, but no one's <laughs> doing like a coming out story. No. Like these are people living their lives. And I think that might be, you know, one of the, I don't know if I want to say most important, but it feels like one of the most important things that they could have done for the storyline for this, because sure it just... They. The relation. I don't know if you could talk more about that because it is it's sure. such an important point of the of the storyline. Well, I think that it's also a test. Of, I mean, you know, what I will say to preface this is like what I'm gonna say is that like, you know, the the kind of trauma coming out narratives are important because if we're talking about representation, you know, a lot of uh queer people's lived experiences are based in trauma um of being, you know, kicked out of their homes, not accepted experiencing uh, things like homelessness and, um, uh, you know, and, and so those stories are quite important to tell. I'm not saying that we should eradicate them by any means. Uh, they're, they're extremely integral to, you know, representation of the queer experience, right? But I think that there's also, you know, this, this other side of like queer people who are successful and well-adjusted and out and proud and also um, well read on, you know, the kind of complexities of their identity. And I think that all of that stuff, you know, as a, as a, a gay man, you know, I've done a lot of that work like on my own um, and that like things that I hold dear to me uh, that I've done on my own regarding my identity and my, and my queerness. And so I think that the lack of kind of talking about these characters queerness unless it's in the context of like Ava and Deborah like talking about bisexuality that I think is not necessarily just about queerness that's about like uh you know intergenerational kind of like dialogue and discourse which is I think the most important thing that, that they've done this season um but I think that you know the the kind of if you want to call it like silence on you know even a, a character like Damien Damien, like, isn't, it's not, I don't think it's until, like, the last episode of this season where Damien mentions going to a gay bar. Mm -hmm. Like, up until, and when I read the script for Damien, it was, it just said Deborah's assistant. He was not meant to, meant to necessarily be queer. I just played him as such. And that was the way that they ended up going. But I, I, I mean, I don't, re I don't recall seeing, like, you know, we're looking for queer, like he's a queer character. So I think that, you know, that also is a testament to just like how invested um, the entire team has been in like championing queer artists and like queer artistry. Um, because, because some characters that I wouldn't even necessarily consider, like Damien, I'm, I'll just speak for Damien, is like, wasn't necessarily meant to be queer. That wasn't in the script for them. So uh, originally, at least as far as I know. Um, and so that's really, that's really cool. Um, mm. And I think that, yeah, I, I mean, I think that just, just kind of not, it's not even like they're treading lightly. It's just like, these are just well-adjusted people, period, who are good at their jobs and they happen to be queer. What's the big deal? Yeah. It's kind of like, it's the real life. I mean, you know. Right, right. And, and you mentioned the generational thing too, and that, that's, also yeah. been some of the funniest points in there because uh you know one of the points i wrote down was about the when uh when uh, when jean thought uh or deborah thought uh she was a descendant of the pilgrims and she said she was <laughs> had blood from the pilgrims and ava makes a mention real quick it's like oh i don't know that you should like seeing them figure that out about each other in the same way that i do with my parents right. or whoever yeah. you know it's i'm really interested to see you know, how much they learn from each other on this one and, and where they sort of yeah. end up landing by the end of it. And they do, you know, I, I mean, I think that, uh, I, like, like you said, I mean, you know, I'm having these conversations with family members who are not necessarily, like, who I don't believe to be prejudiced. Like, my father is not uh, a bigot, you know, but, like, asking questions about non-binary people, um, it's something that's new for him. And so it's something that he's not, he doesn't, he doesn't have the, you know, uh, 
you know, he didn't like go to a liberal arts college in this day and age and talk about, you know, gender theory, um, <laughs> you know? And so it's, it's, it's completely foreign to him. And I don't think that, that he should be penalized for that. I think that asking questions and, um, and, and kind of meeting, like meeting them where they're at as a means of like moving them forward, right? So I think that we're so polarized as a, as a society at this point, rightfully so in a lot of ways, but at the same time, there are still spaces and context in which we need to be, uh, we need to be a bit more forgiving and a bit more patient. Um, as a means of of really educating people, you know, I think that uh, it's not necessarily my only responsibility just because I'm I'm queer to educate people on on the kind of the spectrum of queerness. But why not? I mean, if someone wants to have like a like a true conversation, like I'm not talking about, you know, I'm not going to go and like try and talk to a white supremacist about critical race theory. Like that's not going to happen. But if someone is actually willing and able uh, to sit down and is curious um, to have a, a, a civilized and you know, uh, you know, a conversation, then I'm more than happy to do that. And I think that more people should be, you know, uh, willing and able to do that in a in a in a civilized manner. You know, I, I think that there's a lot of yelling that's going on these days. Again, rightfully so. It for certain things, but if, you know, we can't educate the masses by just screaming and yelling about it, at least the, at least the masses that want to know, right. you know, <laughs> so. Yeah. And, and as you mentioned, I mean, the fact that you guys are doing this through this lens of, of comedy is such yeah. a great way, a conversation starter uh, to, a, you know, for some people to a lot of degree. Uh, and I get that through all of this. I mean, I think, you know, yeah. it's, it's just amazing the way it's all going about. And and I want to bring up, I, I kind of want to end on some comedy too, because you mentioned Laurie Metcalf. Uh, I saw Kyle Gass in there. You know, mm -hmm. to have these people around and, and you know, and everybody says, oh, it's such a fun environment. Sure. And I, I would imagine it is. But when the cameras go off, I mean, do these, they're funny people living in the land of comedians. Does it continue to be sort of in that comedic world, even after sure. when people aren't in character? Sure. I mean, I, I, I think that, you know, I think that there's also something to be said about like the generosity of these incredible people like Jean, first and foremost, like Lori Metcalf, Susie Essman, who's on this season as well, like who I'm such a huge fan of. I mean, I grew up watching Lori like on reruns of Roseanne with my mom on a Saturday morning. You know, it's like I, and, and, and um, myself and Hannah, you know, we were all of us were, were truly, you know, jazzed about being in the presence of these incredible comedians and, and, and actors. And like, I, I think that they're also, at least, you know, everyone that I've worked with on the show, like Lori and Susie, and, and of course, you know, Jean just in general, like are so generous with their time and their talent and their experiences. And I think, and they really, they, they kind of, at least from what I gathered, like loved telling us these stories about the, you know, earlier in their career when they were, you know, my age or Hannah's age or, you know, they really enjoy that. And again, you know, how could you not enjoy when like someone younger than you is coming up to you genuinely interested about like how you got to where you are and, and truly admire you? Because there was not a day where I was just like, I need to soak up every single second of like sitting next to Lori Metcalf when we're waiting to like for another shot. I need to ask her things. I need to talk to her, you know? And so, and, and so there was a sense of, of just genuine excitement from both sides, like where these amazing guest stars, all of them that have come on to the show this season have come on and just been like, we're so stoked to be here. We loved the first season, but then in turn, all of us are like, you know, the younger castmates are just like, oh my God, I can't believe that you're here. <laughs> like, this is fucking insane. You know, I mean, like there's a, there's like a still that they sent me of me standing next to, to Lori um, in a scene. And I was just like, this is wild. Like, I can't believe that, you know, that cause when you're shooting it, it's just kind of like, go, 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 go. You like, let's just, you know, do this. But upon reflection, it's like, God damn, like I really got to work with Lori Metcalf that's 
awesome you know that ain't nothing right there that's that's pretty great it's yeah it's it's incredible and i mean i think that like we all really pinch ourselves every day you know getting to just work with gene um because gene is gene but you know i i think that this season watching gene and Lori interact with each other on camera being able to be in some of those scenes is like it's like watching a master class it's it's really it it just it taught me a lot uh just just from just from observation um and just from being there in the room so yeah Yeah. well mark uh you know, obvious to say to me, but congratulations uh, on, on being a part of this series and with love as well. I know you got another a second world going on there, too. And and it's just I mean, having two work families, uh, I guess, yeah. it's got to be kind of amazing in itself. But, Very uh, grateful. Yeah. But especially uh, Hack Season 2, it's so good. And I thank love you. getting to see you more on this. So, Mark, thank you so much for taking the awesome. time to talk about Thanks, it. Thanks, Kyle.